Hello, this is Bishop, and welcome to the first autopilot test video for, all right, this one's going to be a mouthful, 2017.28C528869 Tesla firmware. So, sorry I had to slow down because I actually need to read that one. I did not have that memorized. All right, so the first test video that I'm going to do is going to be at night for this one, just because that's when I got the prompt. This appears to be a, unlike the previous, um, I think it was .92 or 96 release that adjusted the range calculation for certain models of Tesla. Um, this one does appear to actually be a wide release. And within about four days, it's already gone out to about 25% of the Tesla 5 fleet. Although the um, new versioning num the, ver the new version numbering that they're doing, unfortunately, screw with uh, Tesla 5, which uses, um, I'm guessing, um, some sort of either alphabetical or numeric ordering. Um, so it's actually reading us as like the oldest version right now, technically. So uh, I'm taking the same turn that I normally take at 30 miles an hour, I'm making a quick camera adjustment so you can see a little more of the road and hopefully get the instrument cluster. And let's see how it goes. So, so far, similar to the previous version, um, I am seeing relatively narrow lane lines uh, compared to the previous versions. Uh, so the road is reading as more narrow. Now one of the issues that we had with the last version was overly aggressive slowdown on turns. So now we're slowing down to, I don't think you can see it with the uh, steering wheel in the way, but we're slowing down to about 19 miles per hour. Um, oh, that's way better. But it stayed in the lane the entire time. Uh, the previous version on that particular turn overcorrected pretty much every time that I did it into the center lane, and this one did not. It is actually, it's getting a little close to the side lines, but uh, no, that was actually very good. All right, so I'm gonna take over so I can take a right at this intersection. And turn on the air, it's a bit toasty in here. The intersection's clear. If it's doing this well at night, I'll be curious to see how well it does during the day. Um, it would be very easy to assume that if it does well at night, it would also do well during the day. But one of the other issues that we encountered in the previous version was... Uh, I'll go ahead and re-engage the autopilot. One of the issues that we encountered in the previous version was that... Um, it was the optical detection of the lane lines was having a little bit of difficulty in certain lighting conditions uh, particularly when you're heading towards the sun because the i'm guessing the amount of contrast that you're getting in the optical image wasn't as much and at night um, black asphalt with white lane lines the contrast might actually be better so it's possible that the car might actually even do a better job of lane keeping at night so i will still need to do this test again uh, tomorrow during the day so i can get uh, a little bit more consistent results but so far, this seems noticeably improved. All right, so we're gonna make our same right turn. We'll head to the center lane here. Engage the adaptive cruise control and autopilot, boom. All right, and let's see how it does. Good job. Very nice. This section of the road is not particularly curvy, it's mostly a straight shot, so we'll just see how it goes. Um, hmm, interesting. So, since the videos that I had made last time for the, I want to say, 1726-76 version, uh, I had done a lot more autopilot driving, and I did start to see some cracks in, um, in the new uh, longitudinal detection. The, um, in certain instances, particularly where um, a lane would suddenly separate out into a turn lane on both the left and the right side, the car would get very confused and it would start to enter one of the two turn lanes. All right, let's see what it does here because this is crazy. Oh my goodness. Nope. Okay, taking over. <laughs> okay, there were no clearly defined lane lines because they just re-asphalted this section. So they just have the um, reflective markers. It started looking okay, but then it was about to drive me into the median, so I had to take over. Um, and now the center console is not detecting any lanes. It's uh, getting an occasional flash, but it's not even giving me the option of re-engaging the autopilot. So I'll take over for this section, and as soon as we get back here... So now, clearly defined lane lines again, and I'm given the option to re-engage autopilot, but I'm coming up on a red light, so I am going to have to take back over again. Let's see what it does right up until the red line. Very nice. That was really good. Gonna make a quick camera adjustment. There we go. Okay, 
and I'm still looking for a somewhat more permanent camera mount solution so I can get a consistent camera angle every time I do one of these videos. Okay, I'm turning on the autopilot. It's looking very good. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the previous video um, that I was a little bit confused by was I had heard that Tesla had made some updates to the navigation system, but I wasn't clear on what those updates had been. I've since read a couple threads on the topic. Um, they've basically changed, although the maps that are provided in the center console are all still Google Maps, um, the navigation data, which includes the speed limit detection, is now being provided by um, a different navigation provider. And I apologize because I don't remember the name of that provider off the top of my head. So I'm going to, nor do I remember the name of the original provider because actually I only found out about this when I was reading the thread recently. I didn't know what the original provider was. I just assumed all the data had come from uh, Google Maps since they also do navigation. All right, so I've re-engaged the autopilot at 45 miles per hour in what is actually in reality 35. So, interesting point. Um, so far, this does not appear to be reading street signs. Now, some people might think that the car is reading street signs as a result of the last wide update, the one that I posted the previous, the 172676. However, um, and the reason I might think that is because the updated GPS data is, it seems a lot more accurate to exactly when a speed limit changes on a highway or a stretch of road. So if there is accurate GPS speed limit data for a particular stretch of road, um, the behavior that you're getting with the Autopilot 2 cars now, so it's slowing down a little bit on this turn, but it seems like seems like it's a little bit more aggressive. seems like it's going faster than the last version. The last version slowed down way too much on a lot of turns. But I'll have to find some nice sharp turns to really test that on. So as I was saying, um, the 1726-76 version um, flips over the speed limit like literally the second you pass a speed limit sign in a lot of cases, at least in some of the areas where I've been doing testing. This behavior looks a lot like the speed limit sign detection that the Autopilot 1 cars did. However, um, having done a little bit more testing and you can even actually see just on this particular stretch of road, I keep passing by speed limit signs in areas where there is no GPS data for it and it's not picking up the signs. So even though the car is behaving in a fashion that might imply that it is now reading street speed limit signs. It's just not picking it up in areas where it doesn't have GPS data. It's just that the accuracy of the GPS data has changed. In some instances, is it has improved depending on where you are, and in other instances, it seems to have gotten worse from reports that I've seen. Um, for the most part, a lot of my look a little close there. Uh, a lot of my local road data does appear to be better and more accurate. Like it'll change the speed limit faster once I pass a sign. Um, there is one major stretch of highway near me. It's a major corridor between Boulder and Denver, Highway 36. However, that now reads as 55 miles per hour during the entire stretch instead of reading as 65 miles per hour, which is actually what it is for most of the highway. So, you know, it's, it's map data. You know, it is what it is. It's going to be better in some areas. It's going to be worse in others. It's never going to be perfect. These things are constantly changing. This is why speed limit sign detection is so important and is also obviously going to be a fundamental pillar of full self-driving because what happens when you reach a construction zone or some other temporarily modified speed limit or, heck, even... Um, we don't have a ton of these in Colorado, but in the um, not quite Seattle area, but a little bit east, like closer to Bellevue, uh, a lot of the highways actually have variable speed limit signs. They will change the speed limit depending on the time of day or depending on traffic conditions. So GPS data obviously is going to be sufficient for that. So now I'm coming back through uh, one of the stretches that I previously tested this on, and we'll see how it does on this turn. So far, so good. And we'll go back through the same stretch. I want to hit that same stretch a second time. Uh, just because I want to, obviously we need to do multiple tests. Okay, it's overcorrecting into the center lane. Eh, just a smidge, but better than it has been. This is a challenging section for the autopilot. That's one of the reasons that I continually retest on this area. Mm -hmm. Nice, doing a good job. Also, since 172676, I also noticed that the uh, car does a really good job. It's getting a little wiggy about me not holding on to this, the steering wheel. It's been 
popping up the hold the steering wheel nag message more frequently. There definitely seems to be some sort of logic built in there. You know, just for the hell of it, let's take this turn at 35 this time, which is a little bit over the speed limit, but it's realistically what people actually do take this turn at through here. Uh, I'll be keeping a sharp eye on the road just to make sure since you know, visibility is a little bit less with nighttime. Uh, but as I was saying, 1726-76 seems to do a great job of uh, getting through intersections correctly. Okay, jammed on the brakes because it thought 35 was too sharp. It was too fast. It slowed down to about you know, 20 miles an hour. Oh, much better. The steering was a little bit jerky, but I see it there. There's the nag message again. Yeah, it definitely detects that it's kind of having a little bit of trouble with this area. This is the third time the nag message has popped up on this particular stretch of road just in the last couple minutes. That's obviously because it thinks this is a little bit more challenging of a section. It wants to make sure that I haven't fallen asleep at the wheel. All right, taking back over. Cool. Well, that's a pretty good test for tonight. Um, as soon as I have the opportunity to, I will do some more daytime test videos on the same section just so we can test under similar conditions over and over again. Um, I would like to do some more rainy day test videos like the mountain drive videos that I posted a couple weeks ago, How, or actually it was only a week ago. Um, however, um, unfortunately, I mean obviously I live in Colorado and my ability to test stuff like that is <laughs> I have no control over the weather. So I'll do what I can, but um, daytime conditions, day driving and night driving, you know, these tests are obviously easy to do. I don't have to rely on any sort of special precipitation or weather condition. Well, let's see how it does on, hmm, that's interesting. Um, so one of the issues uh, before I sign off that uh, previous versions of Autopilot had for hardware two cars is late detection of stopped vehicles when traveling at speed. Um, that vehicle was not completely stopped, but the autopilot was engaged a ways out from a vehicle that was nearly at a stop at the intersection, and it seemed like it detected it pretty early on, and it started braking, actually, just for the heck of it. Let's, let's do this section again. This one was fun. Let's watch it freak out again when it loses all the lane lines. But um, yeah, the ability to detect stopped cars earlier uh, is one of the things I'll also be testing. Um, other areas that are currently lacking relative to hardware one cars. So already mentioned uh, speed limit signs not reading. Um, reading cars in adjacent lanes, I'll have to do some testing on that. Detecting other car or other types of vehicles such as motorcycles and trucks with different icons on the instrumentation. Um, that's another one that I'll have to test. These are just examples of some of the like quote unquote undocumented or sort of not necessarily explicitly called out in the release notes. All right, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Yeah, okay, let's go back to the media. <laughs> Um, so these are things that I'll test and continue to update the uh, version tracker spreadsheet as well on. But uh, I think that's it for now, and we'll do more testing tomorrow in the same section of the road to see what kind of result we get. And thanks for watching.